guys welcome to crazy burger so a very special delivery has arrived the 400 mini from atari and retro games is here this is the media box let's get started let's get stuck in let's go Okay guys, so this is the 400 Mini from Retro Games, the makers of the C64 Mini, the VIC-20, the 500 Mini as well, and the C64 Maxi. This is now the 400 Mini from Atari. This is obviously not the box that you would probably buy from the shops. This is a special box that Retro Games have actually sent me with a few other goodies inside. Um, which I obviously thank you very much to Retro Games for sending this to me. A little bit delayed, um, but it's now here. I'll be able to do a full unboxing, full playthrough of all the games and all the other things besides. Um, obviously, I've not sent this video to Retro Games before uploading to YouTube, so my opinions in this video are entirely my own. Okay, so let's get this bad boy opened. It is absolutely huge. Inside, I've got a few extra goodies due to the little delay, which is absolutely fantastic. I've got a A500 C64 Mini uh, gamepad, which is fantastic. This is great. I was actually wanting to buy one of these. I'll probably try it on the, the 400 Mini as well. Let's see if that actually works. Also, they've uh, added in an extra uh, joystick, which is fantastic. This is the CX stick, um, which is brilliant. So I'll be able to play a couple of two-player games as well. Absolutely fantastic. So I'll do a quick check through of that as well. Um, and obviously, we also have the actual the 400 mini in the box and the package joystick too. It's obviously a wired one. Um, I think it's just the same as what you get in this box as well. Um, but yeah, we'll have a quick look at that. We'll see what else is also in the box. Quick look at the, the 400 mini itself. It is nice and tiny. Obviously the keyboard is not workable. Um, it's entirely um, fake. And if you look at the back here, I've got a serial number of 8. So one of the first few units to actually be uh, sort of made, which is fantastic stuff. So thanks very much to Retro Games for that. That is pretty cool indeed. So yeah, before we actually look at the 400 Mini uh, in a little bit more detail, have a look at some of the extras that are in the media boxes that are sent, which is pretty cool. We've got a t-shirt, we've got a mug. So have a quick look at the mug. We've got a few of the minis on the box. Glad to say I've got all of these now. Um, which is fantastic. So got a mug, got a nice little sweet, sweetie uh, pouch, which is fantastic. Thanks for that. I do like myself some sweeties. We've got ourselves a little t-shirt too. The 400 mini t-shirt. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so first off, well, let's look at the 400 mini. Now this is all, it's just really a plastic case and the keyboard does not work. Um, it's really just four looks. We've got the four USB uh, ports at the front of the device. Obviously one's going to be for your joypad or joystick, whichever you're going to use. Um, you can obviously add a keyboard, maybe a mouse, I'm not entirely sure. Um, obviously you can also add your own game, so you'll probably need to connect a USB stick. Um, which we will go over in this video as well, uh, if I can. Um, but it's quite nicely designed, as usual, with all the Retro Games Mini consoles. Okay. So on the back, there's also another USB slot. I'm not entirely sure why there's another one. And there's also a HDMI slot. And there's a, the power cable here, for which is actually USB-C, which is nice. Um, nice to see we've came away from the actual... Um, sort of mini HDMI ones that we used to have uh, back in the day, but it's good to see we're we're up to date And we've got your on off switch here as well um, So yeah, it's a nice little box. It's I think it's a lot smaller than the original The original was actually out in 1979 and it cost about $400 I think uh, at the time and that was quite a lot of money for a computer back in the day Just a little bit before my time. I was actually born, but yeah, I definitely didn't have one. My first computer was a Commodore 64. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm interested to get this going, see what the games are like, see how it performs, add some games, that type of thing. But we'll come to that in a little minute further in the video. We're going to look at the other things in the box. We've obviously got the joystick. Hopefully it's not too stiff. One of the things that always annoyed me about these joysticks was they really are not great for playing games with so hopefully it's okay but I'm pretty sure we'll probably have to switch this out and, and play with probably the joypad that was included within this box or maybe like an 8-bit do controller we'll maybe try a different controller as well 
And Braz Braz, it seems solid enough, but will it be okay to play the games? Time will tell. So as I said, an alternative controller could be the gamepad. This might work okay for a lot of the games. It's certainly one I'm going to try with it. Um, this it was obviously very much designed like, it looks more like a CD32 um, controller, which came, this came with the 500 Mini. And I thought it was a decent controller. Wasn't entirely great for um, like diagonals, because you can see here it's not that great if you're using a game that probably um, relies heavily on diagonal controls, but it, it worked okay apart from that. Um, I'm not entirely sure, I guess these buttons in the front may be like menu buttons perhaps. So, it'll be interesting to see. I'm not sure if it's click -inable. No, it's not click -inable. It doesn't sort of rotate either, it's not like the Atari VCS controller at all. So just so you can get a better look at this uh, gamepad. It's a nice enough gamepad, as I said the diagonals are a bit rubbish to be honest, but it's got some shoulder buttons, got some nice face buttons. Um, and it, it's a nice enough gamepad, probably not as good as maybe like an 8-bit do controller to be honest, but it's going to be a decent alternative to your joystick um, here. But what else is in the box? Let's have a look before we actually boot up the 400 Mini and play those games and see what it's like. Okay, so also in the box we have the power cable, basically the USB-C power cable, and we also have the HDMI power cable. So you don't need an HDMI, you don't need a power Cable. Although there's no plug, you will obviously need to use a USB slot of some description to power the unit, as per all the other minis that were released. So guys, quick note before we get started, I have purchased myself a USB stick, and this one is a SanDisk, and it's one I've used quite a lot for the different minis. Um, you have to um, format it to FAT32 on your PC, and then you can basically just dump all the games onto this. Uh, and then put it into your mini, but we will cover this later on in the video um, And also once you insert one of these you will be able to access basic as well So that will be quite interesting. But anyway guys enough me talking. Let's go play some games Okay guys, so we've got the unit on all plugged in Got the joystick in, we've got the, the gamepad on standby and we've got the mini booted up. Now there's a few things I want to go through before I sort of put it onto the larger screen and I'll talk through. But this joystick obviously has various different buttons around the top here. There's also even one um, down here and there's a couple on the front as well. And they all have different sort of functions and uses and it sort of says on the bottom of the screen what they are. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating, it does take a little while to get your head round if you use a standard joypad, usually. Um, so it, it's a little bit tricky and sometimes some of these buttons reset the games, I think it might be this one, while you're actually playing. Uh, and it, you can accidentally press these while you're playing the game, which isn't ideal at all. Um, so even though the joystick seems okay, it is quite, quite authentic, it seems a little bit stiff to me. Um, but these buttons around the side seem a great idea, but Accidentally pressing them while you're in the middle um, of a game and resetting the game to the start is a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Anyway, it is what it is. It seems authentic, but I reckon I'll probably spend most of my time playing the games on the gamepad instead. Okay guys, so before we get started I'm going to look at some of the settings, the different options that you can use before you actually play the games. Uh, now there are a few options down the bottom of the screen here, if you press up on the joystick um, that will give you help. Depending on what game you're playing it will tell you the controls for each of the games um, and the different controls. See around the sort of cir circular buttons around the actual joystick which is kind of unusual but those actually create a lot of issues within the games because sometimes some of the games used it as a reset button which is an absolute nightmare and um, there's also a button at the top you can interact with objects so it's interesting stuff but hmm it causes its own issues no doubt about it now there's also special actions if you press bottom you will have some special options you can use the home and left button the home button is the top left hand button on the side just at the front um, of that now I don't know why you would want to rewind gameplay I'm not sure why that's there um, I don't think I'll ever use it, but I guess if you want to, it is there. It is a bit odd. Um, you've also got the virtual keyboard as standard with uh, the mini consoles. You've got home and menu. Press them together, you'll get the virtual keyboard. And uh, This can be a little bit of a pain. It's not ideal. I think, ideally, if you've got like a USB keyboard at home, a small one, or even maybe a USB um, sort of wireless one, you should be able to use that on here. I'll have a look at one of the 
uh, USB controlled uh, keyboards at the end of the video. It should work fine. Um, so if you want to go out that, just press top, it will close it. Um, now there's other options down there. You've got save games as well, which we'll cover in a little minute. And um, you've got your menu options. So if you press the top button, the menu button, you will get some different display options, um, which are pretty basic to be honest. You can either choose pixel perfect or standard 4.3. It depends. You want to see it more blocky, choose 4.3. You want it a little bit smoother, I guess. You want to you choose pixel perfect. I don't know. It, you can chop and change whichever one you like. I'm not really sure which is best, to be honest. Um, you can also enable a CRT effect, which gives it a little bit of that monitor style effect. A little bit weird, I guess, if you're, if you're playing that arcade or an old monitor or something. You can also add a new frame to the border. Um, if you don't like that huge black border, you can add some kind of frame to that as well, um, which I guess is pretty cool, but I think sometimes it's a little bit of a distraction, so I'm not going to bother. Um, and you can choose your language, obviously, and advanced options. Um, there's not an awful lot else here. You can choose the level of the music volume or just completely turn it off if you want. System information, this is the build. Now, there might be some firmware updates at some point. Um, there is a guide online um, when that actually happens. But when we get a, a firmware update, I'll go through that process at that time. Um, you shut down the device, legal notices, factory sec. Pretty straightforward stuff. Nothing too um, sort of complex in there. There will be more options once you insert a USB stick, but I'll cover that um, later on in the video. Um, you can sort them in different ways. Favorites. You can, add, if you like a certain game, you can just um, press the left stick. It will add stars to it. Sort them in different um, by author, by genre, by year, by publisher, or just simply by favorite or by title. Um, it really is up to you. So we'll have a quick look at Airball, and I'm going to highlight some issues um, with the actual joystick that I've got. Um, personally, I don't think it's great. It's not the worst. It is stiff. It is pretty authentic, I guess. Um, it's nowhere near as bad as I remember the Atari joystick being. But it's not great for all of these games, and it does have a few games where if you press the circle, circular sort of thing around the joystick, accidentally it will reset games, which I'll go over in a little minute. Um, but it is a little bit of a nightmare. And the, the joystick itself doesn't seem great. There's different ways to start games, whether it's holding right, pressing the fire button, the menu button, it's all over the place. There's no consistency with it whatsoever. And it does get a little bit fr frustrating. Uh, and this game itself just doesn't work on the joystick. It, you think it would, but it's terrible. It's not great on the D-pad either, to be honest, but this game is very, very troublesome. You really feel as if you need some kind of different controller for this altogether. It is painful to play. Um, I'm sure some people might like this, but I think the controls make this extremely awkward to get to grips with altogether. And that is a bit of a shame. So if you want to jump out of these games, you press the home button at the top of the joystick. Um, or it's obviously quite obviously named on the gamepad. Uh, if you want to save your progress, you can just press down the joystick. And you can press fire to... Obviously, save it wherever you like. You want to um, load that again, just press choose one, press, press the fire button, you'll load that game that you were playing. You can actually load, uh, sort of lock these saves as well if you don't want to accidentally override it. This one's quite cool. Um, you need to press the right button around the circular joystick to actually start games. Trying, oh, and as I said there, I've accidentally reset the game immediately uh, when I start, which means this joystick is. A source of massive frustration, and I don't think you can actually use this for many of these games. Doesn't work, it's too stiff, it's not a lot of fun to play, and you can accidentally reset games at any point um, through it. Hopefully they put some firmware update for that, because for me, you cannot use this joystick. You will be massively frustrated. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the gamepad and play through some of the games um, before we jump on to using keyboards and looking at added games via the USB-C. Okay guys, I'll quickly run through the games before I just jump in, play a few of the games quickly. I may actually cover all the games in a separate video because it will take too long to go through every game. Um, we're up to Boulder Dash, Classic Game, Bristles, Capture the Flag, Centipede, Crystal Castles, Electroglide, Encounter, Flip and Flop, Henry's House, Hover Bover, Lee, which obviously was Bruce Lee, we've got Mew, we've got Millipede, Minor 2049er, Missile Command, O'Reilly's Mine, Seven Cities of Gold, Star Raiders 2, and Wavy Navy, and Yump. Um, and that brings us back to Airball. So guys, quickly play through all these games, 
um, or a selection of them, and then I'll give you my thoughts on what the lineup's like, whether it's worth buying for that alone, before we jump into keyboard and sort of added USB games. Woo! <laughs> 
Okay guys, so that's our look at a few of the games included on the mini. Now for me, a lot of these games were completely new, I'd never heard of them before because the, some of these games were a little bit before my time. Obviously played the classics such as Asteroids, Battlezone, that type of thing. There's a few games such as Airball, never heard of before, it's not the greatest. Asteroids, decent enough, Basketball's not great. Battlezone's okay, it's certainly a classic, um, but not one I'm massively fond of. Berserk is good, but it's very, very hard. Boulder Dash is really, really good. Might even be one of the best versions of Boulder Dash I've played. Uh, it is very good. Bristles is good fun, uh, once you get to used to the controls. Capture the Flag is terrible. Don't enjoy that. Centipede is alright. It's classic. May not be the best version of Centipede. Crystal Castles, pretty decent stuff as well. That's a decent version there. Electric Glide, nice enough game. Bit weird though. Um, encounter, that's alright, quite like the graphical style there. Flip Flop is quite good, a little bit tricky to get used to the, the sort of isometric style and it's definitely a no-no for the joystick. This one is an absolute nightmare using the joystick with, um, so I would stick to the gamepad. Henry's House is actually not bad, but very, very hard. Um, Hover Bobber is pretty good. This is one of those Jeff Minter style games, a bit bonkers, but it's, it's interesting enough. Um, a really good version of Lee, obviously it was known as Bruce Lee back in the day, really, really good. Um, it might be one of the best versions as well. It's really decent. Very close to the C64 version. Um, we've got Mule. When I've not put an awful lot of time to uh, this, but um, I know there are a lot of fans out there for this game. Um, and it's one I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And this one was totally um, bypassed my time. Never played it before. Millipede, classic there. Pretty similar to Centipede, obviously. Minor 2049, I really enjoyed that one. Missile Command. Not a big fan, but it's a decent version, um, no doubt about it. O'Reilly's Mind think this is fantastic, really enjoy this style game. A little bit like a Dig Dog style uh, game. Seven City is a goal. Another one I really need to put a lot of time into. It seems really interesting, maybe a lot of depth there. Pretty cool, I'm going to have to put more time into that one. Star Raiders 2 is really, really decent as well. Enjoyed that. Wavy Navy is good fun. So Yoop is one of the most recent titles, I guess, that was released a few years ago as an indie game. Um, and it's pretty decent, it's pretty good stuff. Um, overall, a decent selection game. Yep, it's only 25 games again, much like the A500 Mini. Um, and it's a lot less than the C64 Mini, but you could argue that the games on this are probably better than we found on the C64 Mini overall. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to add some of my own games by uh, putting in the USB stick, um, and then we'll try and play through a few of those as well. Okay, guys, so you can download the manual from the website, um, obviously retrogames.biz, and there is support. There's a manual there to help you um, understand, obviously, because I don't think it comes within any of the boxes. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I didn't get a manual. I think you have to actually go online and download this. Um, from the site. I'll leave a link in the description that just goes through all the different settings, the buttons, um, all that type of thing and obviously it goes into a little bit more detail on the actual joystick and um, what the buttons do um, and also what the different connections are on the back. I'm pretty sure the USB uh, for on the back of this is probably to input your own USB stick. Um, it's probably the best place for that and it should obviously add basic once you add 
um, your USB stick with some games on it, I guess, as well. So we'll have a look at that. Now, also, guys, on the um, actual RetroGames.biz website, there's information about the Mini. There's also a, a large section about each of the games. So if you want a little uh, sort of look at the, the manual of the games, the, um, how you actually play them, there's some of the games... And a little bit in depth, maybe looking at the manual for uh, Mule, for example, would be a good idea to get an idea what to do, how to get started, what to actually play. Hopefully there's some information here uh, of the different game modes, player turn screen, um, and there's some information there. And there's there's um, information about all the games that are included on the mini, so that's quite helpful. I'll leave that uh, link in the description as well, um, which is quite cool. Now, interestingly enough, something that I've not seen yet, but it's been reported there are some graphical issues on Mule. Um, I'm not sure if there's uh, on other games as well, but if you look at there's some graphical anomalies missing. Not sure if that's right. I never played this game back in the day, so I'm not entirely sure. I've just seen some comments on some social media sites that there's some issues with Mule text. There might be uh, a firmware update needed pretty soon, I guess, to fix some of these uh, emulation issues that we see. Anyway guys, what I'm going to do now is actually put my USB stick into the PC and I'll show you how to actually format it to FAT32. It's pretty straightforward. If you right click on the side here, um, it should give you the options to format it. And then just choose FAT32. Obviously the capacity, just leave that, that's absolutely fine. Don't need to, all you need to do is make sure this is FAT32 and click start. Quick format. Oh, I'll erase everything, it's already on it. And that is it done. So you are good to do go. You can actually now start adding your ROMs to um, the stick. Now guys, there's also the frequently asked questions if you want to jump in there. Customer controller configurations, um, if you want to delve deep into that, it is there. Um, but just talking about adding my own games, there are obviously certain file formats that um, can be used um, and I'll have a look at it is included in the manual if you want to have a look at that okay so here are the file formats that you can use um, I'm pretty sure all you need to do is dump them onto the USB stick I don't think they even need to be in any particular folder and um, all you need to do is sort of drop them into the onto the USB stick and they should be found as long as they are in these formats should be fine not totally clear if you can just add a zip file if that will be found and um, but I guess we'll just need to stick to these file types uh, for now now you can actually create playlists as well, and I'm guessing um, you can obviously add different playlists if you have more than one disc per game, which might come across when you're um, sort of got, got your own games added to the stick. So I might cover that in a separate video, but that information is there. If you had any 500 mini, it looks like pretty much the same process that was used for that. Okay guys, once you add your USB stick to the mini, um, it should automatically show up as follows. Um, and I'll obviously show all your own games. Now one thing I've, I've noticed, I tried to add some uh, Atari 5200 games, they were dot .52 or .a52 file types and they have not been recognised. I did try to change them to a bin type, dot .bin, but they still wouldn't play anyway, so um, I'll need to look at that in a future video. Couldn't get Atari 5200 games to play. I maybe need to look at the manual, there might be something I need to be doing there. Um, but I've got some files here, some games, I'm going to play through a couple of them. Now, one thing to notice as well here, that um, the uh, sort of file, once you put your USB stick in, it adds the, the basic file here, as you can see at the bottom, and you can maybe uh, create some programs, I guess, if you know anything about basic um, here. But at this point, you will probably have to attach a keyboard. So I will come back to that in a little minute, and I'll show you how that actually works. Um, but I'll jump into a few games here. Um, that I quite enjoy playing. So if you press the A button, it selects the game, and then you can just press the, the home button to start. Um, but there are some different options. If you press the menu button, um, it will come up with different options to choose from, depending on what model the game is. Um, you can enable basic. Not entirely sure. I need to look into a little bit more details here, but you may need to chop and change here, depending on what file type you've actually got and what game you've got and for what system. It might run a little bit better. You can change the different file types as well. You can also mess about with the control types. Um, if you've got a paddle, you want to use the paddle. If you've got maybe Super Breakout or Pong or something, um, you can play that. And if obviously you've got a 5200 stick, um, you can choose that as well. Don't have one of them, so I can't actually use it. Now, there are secret games that you can unlock if you've got an Atari VSCS controller. They don't look great games, so there's nothing to get excited about here. I think there is a way to actually unlock them without the Atari VCS, but I'll probably look at that in a separate video as well. Um, but anyway, let's jump into Rainbow Walker. Really cool game. Pity they didn't include this um, on the standard um, sort of carousel. Mm -hmm. 
So guys, just like your other games, um, you can actually save um, your progress on these files as well. Um, but I'm not really sure, it's not like um, four slots per game, so I'm not entirely sure how that's actually going to work. Um, but anyway, you can still save save states there. Let's have a quick bash at this, International Karate. So as mentioned previously, you can actually use BASIC that gets automatically added to your USB stick when you insert it. Um, but ideally you really need a full size keyboard um, to make the most use out of it. Um, you can uh, use the virtual keyboard, um, but it's really quite useless. If you're going to add in-depth programs, then it's not going to be a, a good option. Um, like uh, my little keyboard here, I added that. It's a wired keyboard. It worked perfectly okay. You could probably get a dongle and use a wireless one as well um, if you're interested in using it. Personally I'm not really going to touch this side of it too much but it's there if you actually need it. So should you buy a 400 Mini? I would say absolutely yes, especially if you've got nostalgia for the Atari 400 computers. Um, although if like me um, you haven't experienced that then it's all about playing those games that you'd never played before and there's certainly a few on here and some really cool games that I'd never experienced before um, and you can always add your own. Admittedly I don't think there's enough games here at £99 and that joystick that's included is absolutely terrible so you'll probably have to pick up a gamepad um, if you want to get the best experience out this device. But no doubt retro games have a great little product here and I would highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, bye for now.